Blue food coloring can be oxidized by household bleach, which contains hypochlorite. Household bleach, we usually consider to be sodium hypochlorite, to form colorless products as represented by the equation above. So this is the food coloring, reacts with the hypochlorite, produces a colorless product. A student uses a spectrophotometer set at wavelength of 635 nanometers to study the absorbance of the food coloring over time during the bleaching process. So since we're talking about blue food coloring, I'm guessing that this is a wavelength of light that is blue, uh, since that's going to be optimally absorbed by blue food coloring. In the study, bleach is present in large excess, so the concentration of hypochlorite is essentially constant through the reaction. All right. The student used data from the study to generate the graphs below. So we're graphing, see the vertical axis, we have absorbance. And you can view absorbance, if, we're, if we have a high concentration of blue food coloring, then we're going to have a high absorbance. And if we have a low concentration of blue food coloring, we're going to have a low absorbance. So you could view this as a, as, a, as a proxy for concentration of food coloring. Food coloring food coloring concentration. And so here they just plotted absorbance relative to time. Here they're the natural log of absorbance relative to time. Here one over absorbance relevant, uh, relative to time. And so let's look at the questions here. Based on the graphs above, what is the order of the reaction with respect to the blue food coloring? With respect to the food, blue food coloring. So let's think, of, let's, I'll do a little a super fast primer. So if we're talking about a zero, if we're talking about a zero order reaction, that means that the rate of reaction is constant. Rate, constant, and it's independent of the independent of the concentration of blue food coloring. Independent, dependent of the concentration, I'll just say of the coloring. Concentration of the coloring. Is that the case here? Well, no, the rate isn't constant. If we look at just absorbance, which is once again a proxy for our concentration of food coloring, up here our rate is pretty fast. We have a steep slope over here, and then the slope, get, the slope gets less and less steep as, as more as our concentration of food coloring goes down as the reaction proceeds. So this is definitely not a zero order reaction. If this was a zero order reaction, when we just plot absorbance, which is once again the proxy for concentration of food coloring versus time, we would expect to see something more of a line. So if you saw something like that, then you would say, okay, that looks like a zero order reaction. Now when we took the natural log of absorbance, which is once again a proxy for the natu natural log of the concentration of food coloring, here we get a clear line. Here we actually do get a clear line. And I'm not going to go into it. It takes a little bit of calculus and even a little bit of basic differential equations to, to realize it. But this is a giveaway for a first order, for a first order reaction. So in a first order reaction, in first order, the rate, the rate is proportional proportional is proportional to the concentration concentration let me just write it is proportional to the concentration since we're saying with respect to the blue food coloring is proportional to the concentration of blue food coloring i'll just write coloring coloring for short and I'll, I'll throw a little calculus here. You could say the rate of reaction, which is the rate and change of concentration of our coloring with respect to time. And if this looks completely unfamiliar to you, you've never taken a calculus class, ignore what I'm about to say for the next uh, uh, 20 seconds. This needs to be proportional to the concentration of coloring. Coloring, I'll write C-O-L dot for short. And if you solve this, you would see that the natural log of the concentration of coloring with respect to if you plot that versus time is you're going to get a line. So this is a key this is a key signature of a first order first order reaction. But you can even see it here. Up here when the concentration is, of our coloring is high, our rate is high. We have a steep slope and then when our concentration becomes lower, we also have our slope being lower. So you actually don't even need calculus. You could look at this one and see that something very similar to that is happening. So this is a first order reaction. If you're thinking about second order, why did they even show us this? Well, a second order, if you plot one over absorbance versus time or one over the concentration, because as we said, absorbance is a, is a proxy 
for the concentration of our food coloring? Well, then this would be a linear plot. But as you can see, it is not. But if this was a linear plot, then you could say, hey, maybe this is a second order. But just to answer their question, this is a first order reaction with respect to blue food coloring. All right, let's do the part B now. The reaction is known to be first order with respect to bleach. All right, so now we're talking about the reaction order with respect to bleach, not the food coloring. In a second experiment, the student prepares solutions of food coloring and bleach with concentrations that differ from those used in the first experiment. All right? When the solutions are combined, the student observes that the reaction mixture reaches an absorbance near zero too rapidly. So it's getting to no color too fast. In order to correct the problem, the student proposes the following three possible modifications to the experiment. So the, the solution doesn't want the, uh, the, the, the student does not want the solution to become colorless that fast. So what should they do? Should they increase the temperature? Well, increasing the temperature is just going to make the reaction happen even faster. The, the molecules are going to bump into each other with more energy and more, and, and, and more frequently. And so that's, that's just going to make, that's going to get you to colorless even faster. So that's, that's going to go in the opposite direction. So we can rule that out. Increasing the concentration of blue food coloring. Or, well, that, that makes sense. Uh, well, they didn't say blue food coloring, but I'm assuming it's blue, like whatever. Uh, because, well, if it's getting clear too fast, well, if you add, if you add more food coloring, well, then it's, it's just gonna, it, it's, it's going to, it's going to have a higher absorbance, and it's going to take longer to get to clear. So this one seems interesting. Now, what about this? Increasing the concentration of bleach. Well, once again, the, the bleach is a thing that's, that's getting the food, is reacting with the food coloring to make it clear. So if you increase this concentration, you're going to get clear even faster, which is not what the student wants. This is the opposite of what the student wants. So once again, we would cross that one out. And the one that we like is definitely increasing the concentration of the food coloring. And they say circle the one proposed modification. So let me make sure I'm circling it. I guess I'm more rectangling it, but you get the idea. That correct the problem and explain how that modification increases the time for the reaction mixture to reach an absorbance near zero. So I'll write more coloring. More coloring results in higher initial absorbance, higher initial initial ab absorbance and and thus and thus more time more time for mixture to reach to reach near zero absorbance absorbance number word that I really have trouble saying. All right, part C. In another experiment, a student wishes to study the oxidation of red food coloring. Just in the spirit of that one, I'll underline it with red. Of red food coloring with bleach. How would the student need to modify the original experiment procedure, experimental procedure, to determine the order of the reaction with, re with respect to the red food coloring? Well, overall, this is a pretty good experiment. They plotted it in three different ways, which was, uh, as we saw, a, pretty, a very good indicator of what order of a reaction we were talking about. But at the very beginning of this question, we, I, I talked a little bit about this wavelength of light. This is blue light. And even if you didn't know that offhand, you would be able to say, well, if we're studying blue food coloring. They probably picked a wavelength of light that gets, uh, gets absorbed by blue. But if we now care about red, well, we would probably want to use a wavelength of light that is optimally absorbed by red. So a, a red wavelength of light, which will be a lower wavelength of light. So change, change the wavelength of light. Change the wavelength to be suitable, suitable for absorbance. Absor or absorption by red coloring. Red coloring. Or you could say you could lower the wavelength of light, or the wavelength of light should be in the red part of the spectrum to match the red food coloring. Everything else seems completely reasonable.